Chapter 26 The sun was mellower now that the lush greens of the forest were fading to orange. Newly fallen leaves littered the forest floor, crunching beneath blue fur's paws and giving up their musty scent. Birds chattered in the branches, and squirrels were busy collecting for their leaf bear stores. Blue fur had no interest in prey. The fresh kill pile was full, the borders secure. After the clamor of the nursery, she wanted only the peace of the forest. She'd noticed Snowfur sighing after her as she'd left the tumbling chaos of the bramble den. However much she loved White Kit, Snowfur missed being a warrior. Bluefur could tell by the way she watched the patrols leave and return, staring wistfully at the gorse tunnel just as she'd done as a kit. How come Thistleclaw gets to hunt and patrol? She had asked Bluefur the previous day. It's his kit, too. He can't give White Kit milk, Bluefur had reminded her. She'd nudged her sister gently. White Kit'll be eating mouse soon, and then you'll be able to leave him with Robin Wing or Leopardfoot for a while and join a hunting patrol. Snowfur had sighed. Yes, but then I'd miss the little fur ball. Bluefur had swallowed a flash of frustration. You wanted a kit. Well done, Golden Paw. Thrushpelt's mew sounded from over a rise, snapping Bluefur's thoughts back to the forest. A branch shook overhead. Look, Bluefur! Golden Paw was peering down from the leaves. I'm going to climb to the top. Be careful, Bluefur warned. Golden Paw seemed more adventurous with each passing day, so that she nearly rivaled her brother in courage and strength. Concentrate on what you're doing. Thrushpelt yowled from the bottom of the trunk. Where's Dappletail? Bluefur asked, wondering why Goldenpaw wasn't being watched by her mentor. Thrushpelt didn't take his eyes off the pale ginger shape scrabbling through the trees. She had to see Featherwhisker about a seed that got stuck in her eye. I'm going to ask Sunstar if Thrushpelt can be my mentor forever, came a squeal from above them. Dappletail would never have let me climb this high. Thrushpelt flashed Blue for a guilty look. Oops, he meowed. Goldenpaw seemed so sure she could do it, I assumed it wasn't the first time. Blue Fur purred. Don't worry, I won't tell Dappletail. Thrushpelt flicked his tail lightly across her flank. Thanks, and I'll make sure Goldenpaw gets back to the camp in one piece. Heading away from Goldenpaw's tree, Blue Fur wandered through a grassy glade and pushed her way past a wall of ferns. She was thirsty, and the river was burbling nearby. The bushes there were still lush. This part of the forest was sheltered from chilly nights and cool breezes. The river had risen since the height of Greenleaf, splashing over stones and lapping at the shore, its chatter harmonizing with the soft rustle of the forest. Bluefur peered through a bush and down the leaf-strewn bank. A reddish-brown pelt moved in the shadows. Fox? She tasted the air warily. Stiffening, she recognized the tang of River Clan. She stared in astonishment as Oakheart padded out on the ThunderClan side of the river, barely three tail lengths from Bluefur. He shook himself like a dog, then stretched out on a smooth stone sloping up from the water. The sun glistened on his sleek pelt, which clung darkly to his well-muscled frame. He was going to sleep on ThunderClan territory. Bluefur tensed, ready to spring out and confront the trespasser. Then she paused. He looked so peaceful, caught in the moment she found herself watching his flank rising and falling. What am I doing? She plunged through the bushes and skidded to a halt behind him, sending small stones rattling down to the water. Get out! Oakheart lifted his head and glanced over his shoulder. Blue fur. He could at least act guilty. She'd caught him on ThunderClan territory. Just because you took sunning rocks, she hissed, doesn't mean you can help yourself to any piece of territory you want. Her pelt sparked with fury. Sorry, Oakheart got to his paws. I couldn't resist such a sunny spot. You couldn't resist? Rage choked her. 
You arrogant furball! Without thinking, she launched herself at him, claws swiping at his face. He ducked, and she missed. Blue Fur stopped with her paws dug into the stones to stop her from falling over. Were his whiskers twitching? I'll teach him. She twisted and sharply nipped his hind leg. Ow! Oakheart hopped out of the way and swung his broad head toward her, catching her shoulder as she reared for another lunge. While she was scrabbling at the air, Bluefur's hind paws skidded out of the stones. She lost her balance and flopped ungracefully into the river. As the water drenched her pelt, panic shot through her. I'm drowning. Help me. But Oakheart stayed on the bank, his eyes bright with amusement. Try standing up, he suggested calmly. Bluefur thrust her paws downward, expecting to vanish underwater. Instead, her feet stubbed against the round stones on the bottom of the river. She stood up, surprised to find the water barely lapping at her belly fur. Hot with embarrassment, she stalked onto the bank and shook herself, making sure Oakheart felt the spray. How was I supposed to know it was that shallow? She snapped. Thunderclan cats don't have to get wet to catch our prey. Oakheart shrugged. Sorry you got a bit damp. His gaze flitted over her pelt. I was just defending myself. His feeble apology only made Bluefur angrier. Why don't you shut up and get off my territory? He tipped his head to one side. It seems a shame to leave at the start of such a promising friendship. Friendship? This River Clan cat was cheekier than the most upstart kit. You'd better leave now or I'll give you a scar you won't forget, Bluefur growled. Oakheart dipped his head, his gaze holding hers for an instant, then padded into the shallows and swam sleekly across the river. Bluefur watched him slip onto the bank at the other side, water dripping from his thick pelt. Before he disappeared into the trees, he looked back at her, his eyes gleaming. I won't forget you. Scar or no scar, he called. Bluefur didn't dignify his dumb comment with a reply. Mouse brain? Wet and cross, she stamped up the bank and headed into the trees. When she reached the top of the ravine, she was still pricking with anger. How dare Oakheart be so brazen when he was on ThunderClan territory? Did he think StarClan had given him the whole forest? She was so lost in thought, Rosetail made her jump when she bounded over the top of the cliff. You're wet! Rosetail glanced at the sky, puzzled. It hasn't been raining, has it? Bluefur glanced at her paws. It was, uh, I slipped and fell. The bank was. How could she possibly say that a River Clan warrior had thrown her in the river? Rosetail's whiskers twitched. Not looking where you were going? It was slippery. Rosetail's eyes flashed with curiosity. You look different. Bluefur shifted her paws. How? You look moony, like Snowfur when she's talking about Thistleclaw. Don't be silly. Who is it? Rosetail's ears were twitching. No one. Thrushpelt? Rosetail pressed. What? Bluefur bristled. Why would she moon over thrush pelt? Of course not, she replied hotly. Rosetail tipped her head to one side. Too bad, she mewed. He spends enough time mooning over you. Me? The thought shocked Bluefur. Thrush pelt was just a den mate, and she wasn't going to end up like Snowfur, stuck in the nursery with a bunch of mewling kits clambering over her. She was going to be the best warrior ThunderClan had ever seen. Better than Thistleclaw. Good enough to be leader one day. Rosetail rolled her eyes. Hadn't you noticed him watching you? No! Bluefur snapped with such ferocity that Rosetail took a step back. Okay. The red-tailed warrior changed the subject. I'm just off to get some fresh moss for Snowfur and White Kit. At the mention of her kin, Bluefur softened, her damp pelt smoothing. How is White Kit? 
He's been chasing Snowfur's tail all morning. She's ready to box his ears, but she won't. He does it so sweetly. I can imagine. Blue fur pictured White Kit's round blue eyes gazing innocently up while he batted his mother's fluffy tail. I just hope Tiger Kit isn't a bad influence, Rose Tail fretted. When I left, he was trying to persuade White Kit to flick burrs into Frost Kit's pelt while she was sleeping. Didn't Leopardfoot stop them? You know Leopardfoot, Rose Tail sighed. She thinks Tiger Kit can do no wrong. I'll go visit the nursery, Blue Fur offered. Snow Fur would appreciate it, Rose Tail meowed. I think she's got den fever. She's almost shredded her nest. She needs some fresh air. As Rosetail padded into the trees, Bluefur noticed a tuft of dog hair caught in the grass. There was barely any scent clinging to it. It must have been blown there rather than left by a passing dog. But it might keep White Kit busy for a while. She plucked it up with her claws and carried it down to the nursery. Snowfur was looking hot and harassed when Bluefur squeezed into the bramble den. Frost Kit and Brindle Kit were tumbling over Robin Wing, their tails flicking in Snowfur's face at every turn. White Kit was fast asleep, splayed on Snowfur's flank so that she couldn't move. Tiger Kit was nagging his mother. Why can't I go out? You've just come in. But it's a sunny day. You need a nap. I'm not tired. You will be later. I'll sleep then. But you'll be grumpy all afternoon if you don't nap now. No, I won't. Yes, you will. Snowfur rolled her eyes at Bluefur. Here. Bluefur dropped the tuft at the edge of her sister's nest. Rosetail was right. The bracken was in shreds. White Kit can play with it when he wakes up. Snowfur groaned, trying to adjust her position without disturbing her kit. What's that? Tiger Kit was already leaping for the dog fur. It's for white. Tiger Kit hooked it up before Blue Fur could finish her sentence and started chasing it around the nursery. Look, he squealed, I'm Thistleclaw attacking that mangy dog. Keep your voice down, Snow Fur pleaded. Tiger Kit paused, his claws pinning the dog fur to the den floor. I hate the nursery, he complained. It's too full of kits. I'm never allowed to play anymore. I should be in the apprentice's den with Lion Paw. I bet he doesn't have to take afternoon naps. Bluefur purred. Maybe not, but he wishes he could. White Kit lifted his head sleepily. What's going on? You've woken him up, Snowfur puffed. Good, Tiger Kit mewed. Now he can play too. White Kit looked around. Play what? My new game? It's called Kill the Dog. Tiger Kit told him. He flung the tuft of fur over White Kit's head. White Kit scrabbled up to catch it, making Snow Fur grunt as the kit's hind claws dug into her pelt. Let's go for a walk, Blue Fur suggested. Snow Fur blinked. White Kit's happy playing with Tiger Kit, Blue Fur reasoned. I'm sure he could spare you for a while. She looked at the snowy kit bundling around the nests after Tiger Kit. You'll be okay if Snowfur comes for a walk with me, won't you? White Kit didn't even glance at her. Of course. We'll keep an eye on him, Robin Wing promised. Snowfur's eyes brightened. Well, I suppose I could go out for a while. It'll do you good, Bluefur promised. Are you sure he'll be okay? Snowfur fretted. He'll be fine, Robin Wing told her. Now go on, I'm sick of listening to you sigh. I don't sigh, Snowfur objected. Leopardfoot flicked her tail. You've been snorting like a badger all morning. Okay, okay. Reluctantly, Snowfur climbed out of her nest. Don't come back till your paws ache, Robin Wing called as Snowfur followed Bluefur out of the nursery. Hurry up. Snowfur was dragging her paws as Bluefur led her to the entrance. But what if he gets hungry? He won't starve. What if he gets anxious without me? He's got a whole clan looking out for him. Bluefur nudged her sister into the gorse tunnel. I think he'll be okay. 
Great star clan, if this is what it's like to have kits, I'm glad I don't have any. She shooed Snowfur up the ravine, shaking her head when Snowfur halted at the top and peered wistfully down at the camp. Look, Bluefur huffed, it's a lovely day. White Kit will be fine. It's not like we're going to high stones. You'll see him again before the sun's moved a mouse length. Chapter 27 Bluefur led her sister through the trees, following the route she'd taken that morning. It'll be quiet by the river, she told herself, out of the way of hunting patrols. The sound of the water would soothe Snowfur, and it would be sunny so they could bask for a while. Snowfur was already looking happier, trotting through the breeze-rustled forest. I'd forgotten how good it smells, she chirped, taking another deep breath. Suddenly she stopped. Wait. Bluefur paused, trying not to sigh. What is it now? With a playful hiss, Snowfur lunged at her, giving her a shove that sent her tumbling against a bramble heavy with blackberries. The fruit trembled as Bluefur found her paws. Why, you? She sprang out of the sweet-smelling thorns, bowling her sister to the ground where they tussled like kits. Snowfur pinned Bluefur down. Do you give in? Never, Bluefur yowled. She pushed with her hind paws and rolled Snowfur off, tumbling her into the brambles so that the berries stained her fur. Snowfur leaped away. Look what you've done! She stared in mock dismay at her purple-streaked pelt. Let's go and wash it off in the river, Bluefur suggested. Snowfur blinked. Or I could just lick it off. It's nice down by the river, Bluefur pressed. She wanted to make sure Oakheart hadn't returned. Okay, I could do with a drink, Snowfur meowed. It'll be nice to lap water that doesn't taste of moss. Bluefur headed for the riverbank. Not so fast, Snowfur was puffing. I'm out of practice, remember? Snowfur slowed as they padded from the trees onto the riverbank. She tasted the air, her pelt bristling with anticipation. Had he returned? No sign of fresh scent. Good. And yet, why did she feel disappointed? She padded to the spot where he'd been lying. The stone felt warm beneath her paws, and his scent lingered in the still air. Snowfur had been lapping from the river. She lifted her dripping muzzle and stared across at the river clan bank. Do you think they'll try invading again? Who knows, Bluefur murmured. They're so greedy, I wouldn't be surprised. Snowfur crunched over to her and sat down. When do you think Sunstar will make a stand for Sunning Rocks? Do we really need to fight? Bluefur queried. Snowfur looked sharply at her. Don't you want to? Battles are dangerous, Bluefur reminded her. Snowfur blinked. Yeah? Cats get hurt, Bluefur gazed across the river. River Clan can't be all bad, can they? I mean, they must be cats like us. So that gives them the right to take sunning rocks. No, but Bluefur wasn't thinking about sunning rocks. I just mean, why fight? We all want the same things. You'll be telling me you want to eat fish next, Snowfur teased. She nosed Bluefur toward the water. Why don't you have a swim? Bluefur dug her paws into the stones to stop herself staggering into the water. She'd already gotten wet once today. They probably think we're strange for living under trees and chasing squirrels. Snowfur tipped her head on one side. Are you feeling okay? Fine, Bluefur answered. Where's your loyalty to ThunderClan gone? I am loyal, Bluefur snapped. I chased a RiverClan warrior off this rock only this morning. Snowfur's eyes grew wide. Are they trying to invade again? Did you tell Sunstar? Bluefur shook her head. It wasn't like that. He was just sunning himself. Who? Bluefur looked away. Crooked Jaw's brother. Oakheart? When Bluefur didn't reply, Snowfur moved closer. 
Why didn't you mention it? I chased him off, didn't I? Then why are you being so secretive? He wasn't invading. He was just lying in the sunshine. On our side of the river, Snowfur growled. Arrogant furball. He wasn't arrogant. Bluefur's heart lurched when she realized she'd jumped to Oakheart's defense too quickly. You like him! Snowfur's eyes were huge and round. You like a River Clan cat! No, I don't! I know you better than that! Snowfur's pelt was bristling. If it had been any other River Clan cat, you'd be telling the whole clan how you chased him off, not making excuses for him. I'm not making excuses. But Snowfur wasn't listening. You can't make friends with cats from other clans. It's against the warrior code. And Oakheart, of all cats, he thinks he's Star Clan's gift to the clans. He'll cause nothing but trouble. What about Thrushpelt? He's been following you around for moons. Don't tell me you haven't noticed. Why don't you like him? He's one of the nicest warriors in the clan. Nice, Bluefur scoffed. Besides, she glared at Snowfur. I'm not looking for a mate. I don't want to end up in the nursery suckling kits. Snowfur spun around looking furious, and Bluefur instantly regretted her words. I didn't mean there was anything wrong with having kits, she called. But Snowfur was marching up the bank, her tail kinked angrily over her back. She disappeared into the undergrowth. Mouse tongue. Why didn't she think before she spoke? It was all Oakheart's fault. Why did he have to come over there in the first place? She didn't want a mate. And even if she did, it wouldn't be him. A River Clan cat? Never. Bluefur hurried after her sister, following her scent trail through the undergrowth. As the oak trees turned to pine, she pushed through a clump of ferns, still fresh with snow fur scent. She wanted to apologize. She'd brought her sister into the forest to cheer her up, but she'd just upset her instead. Snowfur? The white warrior was crouched behind a pine root, fur twitching along her spine, her jaws open to taste the air. Get down, Snowfur hissed. I smell Shadow Clan. Bluefur ducked beside her. Sure enough, the stench of Shadow Clan was fresh on the breeze. It mingled with the scent of the thunder path, several tree lengths away. Blue fur wrinkled her nose. More than one cat scent tainted the air. Should I get a patrol? She whispered. There are no more than three of them, Snowfur murmured. We can take them ourselves. She crept forward over the tree root and slithered under a bush. Blue fur slid in beside her. Now she could clearly hear Shadow Clan voices muttering a few tail lengths ahead. You should never have chased it over the Thunder Path. But I nearly had it. It's gone now. Bluefur peered through the leaves and saw three pelts huddled in a small clearing between the pines. Let's go back, a black tom spoke. No, a tortoiseshell she cat insisted. I can still smell the squirrel. It's close. The black warrior flicked his tail. Thunder Clan has been as jumpy as fleas since River Clan took Sunning Rocks. We should go. I'm not worried about Thunder Clan, meowed a mottled tabby Tom. They'll be busy patrolling the River Clan border. We'll just get the squirrel and take it back over the Thunder Path. They'll never know we were here. You heard Sunstar at the last gathering, the black Tom cautioned. He said he'd shred any cat who crossed the border, kitty pet or clan. The tabby Tom sighed. Okay, he conceded. Let's go. The tortoiseshell stiffened. No, I can smell the squirrel. Small paws skittered nearby. The shadow clan cats pressed themselves to the ground. This way. The tortoiseshell began to stalk, keeping low. Snowfur growled. If they think they're going to hunt on ThunderClan territory, they've got another think coming. She leaped out from the bush and skidded in front of the ShadowClan warriors, her back arched and her claws unsheathed. Stop right there. 
The Shadow Clan cats flinched away, tails bushing. Blue fur pelted after her sister. Mangy crow food eaters. She bared her teeth, a growl rumbling in her throat. The tortoiseshell blinked. Is that it? Two cats? Not much of a patrol. Enough to deal with you, Blue fur spat. The black tom straightened, eyes gleaming. You think so? The tabby snarled. If your all ThunderClan can come up with, I think we'll catch this squirrel and then go home. Oh, no, you don't. Snowfur launched herself at the tabby, knocking him sideways with a crashing blow from her forepaw. The tortoiseshell's eyes widened with shock. Even Bluefur was startled. Snowfur, she began. I've been stuck in camp too long to miss the chance for a fight, Snowfur spat. There was no way Bluefur was going to let her sister battle these trespassers alone. Springing forward, she lashed out with unsheathed claws at the black tom, slitting his nose. He pelted, yowling into the bushes. The tabby tom scrabbled to his paws. Let's get out of here, he yowled. Snowfur hurtled after the fleeing Shadow Clan warriors, screeching like a whole battle patrol. Bluefur was on her tail. They would teach those crow food munchers a lesson they wouldn't forget. The forest brightened ahead where the trees opened onto the thunder path. The Shadow Clan cats pelted out into the sunshine, and Snowfur hared after them. Bluefur raced from the trees, blinking against the sudden brightness. The Shadow Clan warriors were already halfway across the thunder path. You don't escape that easily! Snowfur screeched furiously as they skidded to the other side and disappeared into the pines. Pelt bristling, eyes wide, Snowfur streaked after them over the oily thunder path. Bluefur froze. A monster was roaring straight at Snowfur. Without slowing down, it slammed into her body. Bluefur heard the dull thump, then the howl of the monster as it thundered away, leaving Snowfur's body lying like a wet leaf at the edge of the thunder path. No! Chapter 28 The monster's roar faded quickly away. Bluefur could see the Shadow Clan warriors peering from the trees beyond the thunder path their eyes wide with horror. Snowfur? She bent down and nudged her sister with her paw. The white warrior didn't respond, just lay limply on the stinging grass. Come on, Bluefur urged. We have to get back to camp. We've got to report those Shadow Clan warriors. A thin trail of blood rolled from Snowfur's mouth. I'll help you, Bluefur offered. She grasped Snowfur's scruff and began to drag her into the forest. Try your paws, Bluefur begged through her mouthful of fur. Once you're walking, you'll feel better. Snowfur's body slid over the leaf strewn floor. Oh, Star Clan, why did I tell her about Oakheart? She wouldn't have run off. We'd never have found those Shadow Clan warriors. They'd be home by now. White Kit bouncing with excitement at seeing his mother back. Bluefur? Adderfang's mew sounded through the trees. Bluefur let go of her sister and stared at the mottled warrior, her mind blank. Adderfang had come. Everything would be fine now. Dappletail was with him and Windflight and Thrushpelt. They'd know what to do. Her clanmates swarmed around her. She felt their pelts brushing hers as they leaned over Snowfur. A monster hit her, Bluefur explained. Her voice sounded as if it was coming from far away. Shadow Clan cats were hunting squirrels in our territory and we chased them, and it hit her. Thrush pelt, Adderfang's order was brisk. Check Shadow Clan has gone and isn't coming back. As Thrush pelt raced away, Adderfang grasped Snowfur's scruff. Be careful, Bluefur cautioned, heart lurching. I think she's hurt. She felt White Eye's tail drape over her shoulders. Come on, the pale she-cat murmured, coaxing her forward. 
Let's get back to camp. Blue first paws, numb with shock, stumbled over the forest floor. She's hurt. She's just hurt. No matter how many times she repeated the words in her mind, her heart had recognized the scent of death on her sister. She knew Snowfur was dead. And with each step, the horror grew stronger, until grief threatened to swamp her. Just keep walking, White Eye whispered, pressing closer. I told her she'd be back with White Kit, Bluefur mumbled. At the top of the ravine, Adderfang laid Snowfur down and faced Bluefur. He stared steadily at her until she blinked away the haze of grief and looked into his eyes. Bluefur? His mew was gentle. What? You must tell White Kit. Bluefur flinched. Why me? Because you love him, Adderfang told her. I'll tell Thistleclaw and Stormtail and make the report to Sunstar. White Eye gazed at Snowfur's body. Thistleclaw could tell White Kit, she suggested. No. Bluefur bristled. Thistleclaw would never be gentle enough for news like this. I'll tell him. Blindly stumbling, she managed to reach the bottom of the ravine. She padded into the clearing and passed her clanmates, who knew nothing of the tragedy, who still believed Snowfur was alive. She slid into the nursery. White Kit, you're back. White Kit looked delighted. He glanced behind Bluefur. Is Snowfur with you? Bluefur took a deep breath and tense to stop her paws from shaking. Come outside, little one, she mewed. Has Snowfur got a present for me? White Kit chirped. Tiger Kit stopped chasing Brindle Kit's tail. Can I come too? Just White Kit, Bluefur told him thanking Star Clan that he listened for once. White Kit followed her out and she led him to the fallen tree and ducked in among the branches. What is it? Where's Snowfur? He squeaked. Is she playing hide and seek? Come here. Bluefur wrapped her tail around his small body and pulled him close, sheltering him beside her belly. She bent over him, shielding the sight of Adderfang carrying his mother's body into camp. She felt her heart crack. So much pain. Snowfur won't be coming back. White Kit looked up at her. Till when? Ever. Why not? White Kit stiffened. Doesn't she like me anymore? She loves you very much. Bluefur promised, she'll always love you. But she's with Star Clan now. White Kit put his head on one side. Can I visit her? Bluefur shook her head. Goosefeather and Featherwhisker visit Star Clan all the time, White Kit argued. I can do it too. It's not that easy. With every word, Bluefur felt herself getting more and more lost. How would she ever make him understand without breaking his heart? She gazed into his round blue eyes. The pain of Snowfur's death was not hers alone. She was going to have to break his heart. She's dead, White Kit. You won't see her anymore. You won't smell her or hear her or feel her fur next to yours ever again. Robinwing nosed her way through the branches. I'll feed you, and you'll share my nest with Frostkit and Brindlekit, she soothed. Whitekit spat at her. I don't want your milk or your nest. I want snow fur. He pelted past the queen and galloped into the clearing, stopping beside his mother's body. I'll live out here now with you, he squeaked, pressing his nose into her cold fur. Blue fur cowered into the branches, raw with grief. I'll sit with him, Robin Wing murmured, turning away. Thistleclaw stormed past her, forcing his way into the branches. How could you let it happen? He yelled at Bluefur, 
What were you doing taking her to the Thunder Path? She should have been in the nursery with White Kit. I, I'm sorry. How could you even think of letting her put herself in danger when she had a kit to look after? Thistleclaw hissed. Bluefur stared hollow-eyed at her sister's mate. He was right. This was all her fault. Leave, Stormtail appeared behind Thistleclaw. He held a branch aside with his shoulders, leaving room to get out. This isn't helping any cat, he growled. Thistleclaw backed away, throwing a last angry glance at Bluefur. Stormtail squeezed in beside her. His eyes shone with sorrow. Adderfang told me. Bluefur stared at her paws. I can't lose Snowfur as well as Moonflower. Why did they both have to die? Stormtail shook his head. Only StarClan knows that. Then StarClan is stupid and cruel. Life must go on, Stormtail pressed against her. You have other clanmates. Not like them. They were kin. Your clan depends on you as much as Snowfur and Moonflower did. More so. I don't care. Stormtail brushed his tail down her flank. I know you do care. And I know you won't let your clanmates down. You must go on, hunting and fighting and living for your clan. When she didn't reply, he licked her between the ears and padded away. Bluefur dug her claws into the ground and glared up at the pale gray sky, crisscrossed with bare branches. What was the point of being in a clan when you couldn't keep your most precious clanmates safe? Chapter 29 Bluefur hooked the dead mouse absently on her claw and let it fall onto the ground again with a damp plop. She had no appetite. Even the smell of fresh kill made her queasy. Lying alone at the edge of the clearing, she studied her clanmates through half-closed eyes. They were sharing tongues before tonight's gathering, murmuring cheerfully to one another as if Snowfur had never existed, though it was only half a moon since her death. Even White Kit had started to stray more and more from Robin Wing's side and was playing pounce with Tiger Kit outside the nursery. Bluefur rolled the mouse underneath her paw, caking it with dust. Tawny Spots got to his paws and padded from the knot of warriors, sharing prey beside the nettle patch. He glanced at the mouse. That's wasted fresh kill now, he observed. His tail was twitching. Sunstar wants you to go to the gathering. Bluefur sighed. Well, I don't want to go. It was a long trek and the evening was chilly. And who made you my mentor? I'm a warrior now, remember? It's time you started making an effort. Tawny Spots looked sternly at her. I've spared you from as many border patrols and hunting parties as I can, but all you do is mope around the camp. Perhaps if you started to act more like a clan cat, you might feel better. He glanced toward White Kit, who was struggling to pin Tiger Kit to the ground. And you could show a little more interest in White Kit. Bluefur stared blankly at her kin. Robin Wing was taking good care of him. He didn't need her, and the clan seemed to be thriving without her help. After a rich green leaf, they looked as sleek and well fed as River Clan. A low growl sounded in Tawny Spot's throat. You used to spend every spare moment with White Kit. Now you never set paw in the nursery. He must feel like he's lost two mothers instead of one. Bluefur scowled at him. Why was he trying to make her feel worse? He went on. Thistleclaw hasn't let grief stop him caring for his clan, and he's spending more time with White Kit, not less. Good for him, Bluefur muttered. What makes you so special that you can get away without doing anything for your clan? Tawny Spots demanded. I lost my sister. 
Bluefur bit back the reply, though she wanted to wail it to the darkening sky. Instead, she hauled herself to her paws. Nothing makes me special, she growled. I'll go to the gathering if it makes you happy. Tawny Spots turned away and signaled with his tail. Lionheart and Goldenflower, recently made warriors, were already at the camp entrance. They circled impatiently while the older warriors gathered. Tigerkit bounced over, his dark brown tail sticking straight up. He was starting to lose his fluffy kit fur, and broad, powerful shoulders and long legs were emerging from his stumpy body. Can I come? He called. I'll be an apprentice in a moon. Kits don't go to gatherings, Tawny Spots reminded him. Tiger Kit rushed over to Lionheart and batted at his shoulder with his front paws. You will tell me everything when you get back, right? You'll be asleep when I get back, Lionheart purred. No, I won't. I'm going to stay awake. Leopardfoot, who was joining the patrol to Four Trees for the first time since she'd kitted, shook her head. You'd better be sound asleep when we get back. Robin Wing will want some peace after having you rascals charging around all day. We've been outside for ages, Tiger Kid objected. And who's been keeping an eye on you to make sure you don't get into mischief? Robin Wing said she had to get you out of the warrior's den three times. Tiger Kit shrugged. We wanted to see what it was like. Anyway, I'm not tired, so why is Robin Wing? Leopardfoot gave up and turned to Adderfang. Do you think he'd be less argumentative if his father were still around? She sighed. Adderfang's whiskers twitched. I don't think any cat could influence that young Tom. He's going to make a great warrior. Leopardfoot's eyes glowed. I know. Dappletail brushed against Bluefur as she joined her clanmates. Patchpelt dipped his head to her and Rosetail stood beside her as though she were an apprentice who needed guiding. Bluefur pulled away. There was nothing any of her clanmates could do to ease her pain. She wished they wouldn't bother. The forest was crisp. For the first time since Greenleaf, Bluefur remembered what it was like to shiver with cold as a chill wind rustled the branches. As the cats padded through the forest, Featherwhisker caught up to her. He'd come without goose feather this time. No one said it out loud, but there was a feeling in the clan that the old medicine cat could no longer be trusted to mix with the other clans. His words and actions had become too unpredictable. Featherwhisker stared ahead. She'll be watching you, he murmured. Bluefur knew he was talking about Snowfur. She glanced up through the branches at Silverpelt. What use was her sister up there? Her clan needed her down here. Have you seen her in your dreams? Featherwhisker shook his head. Not yet, but I know Snowfur would never stop looking out for you and for White Kit. Bluefur couldn't see what good that would do any of them. Featherwhisker let his pelt touch hers. White Kit will need your help to learn how to make the right choices, and how to care for his clan like a true warrior. He has Robin Wing and Leopardfoot, Bluefur reminded him, and Swift Breeze. The tabby warrior had only just kitted. Spotted Kit, Red Kit, and Willow Kit hadn't even opened their eyes yet. They'll care for him, Featherwhisker agreed. But you are the only cat in ThunderClan who can begin to take Snowfur's place. You are his kin. So is Thistleclaw. Thistleclaw will teach him how to be a fierce warrior, Featherwhisker murmured. But who will teach him that softness and strength can exist together? And that loyalty to the clan comes from the heart, not through teeth and claws. The medicine cat apprentice went on ahead, his paws silent on the forest floor, leaving Blue Fur to walk alone with her thoughts. Trailing after her clanmates as they padded through the silver forest, Blue Fur glanced again at the stars. She tried to imagine Snowfur looking down from beside Moonflower, but the stars looked like tiny fragments of ice sparkling in distant blackness. Pretty to look at, but useless. Utterly, utterly useless. The moon shone over four trees like a cold white eye. 
ShadowClan and RiverClan already mingled in the clearing. WindClan haired down from the moorland as ThunderClan arrived. Excited voices shared news and purrs warmed the chilly night air. Bluefur watched her clanmates melt into the crowd, feeling far, far away. Got your paws wet recently? A deep, familiar mew made her turn. Oakheart. Instantly, she remembered her last conversation with Snowfur. He'll cause nothing but trouble. She'd been right about that. Don't you have any friends in your own clan? She snapped. Oakheart stepped back, surprised. I heard about Snowfur, he meowed. I'm sorry. What's it got to do with a River Clan cat? She spat. For once, the River Clan warrior seemed lost for words. He stared at her for several moments, then murmured, I'd be lost if anything happened to Crooked Jaw. You've got no idea. Bluefur marched away, furious. How dare he pretend to know what she felt? Isn't it great? Bluefur had nearly crashed into Goldenflower. The young ginger warrior was staring at the assembled cats with wide, glowing eyes. I've never seen so many cats at a gathering before, she went on. Then she caught Bluefur's eye and stopped. What's wrong? Oakheart's been sticking his nose in where it doesn't belong, Bluefur growled. Ignore him, Goldenflower advised. He's so full of himself that he's got no room left for brains. Bluefur snorted. That just about describes the smug flea bag. Look! Goldenflower stared up at the great rock as the leaders bounded to the top. They're starting! She hurried away, pushing through her clan to get to the front. Bluefur was happy to loiter at the back. Rosetail sat down beside her. Wind clan's looking plump. Bluefur hadn't noticed, but now she realized that the moorland cats did seem healthy and well-fed for once. I hope they don't get too fat to catch rabbits, she muttered. We don't want them thieving from the forest again. Rosetail nudged her. Don't be so grumpy. Sunstar was addressing the clans. ThunderClan has three new kits, murmurs of appreciation spread through the clan, and two new warriors. The ThunderClan leader gazed down at his clanmates, Lionheart and Goldenflower. The two young cats pricked their ears and straightened their whiskers as the clans called their names. As the cheers died away, Sunstar went on with his report. We chased a fox back into Two-Leg Place and halted the kitty pet intrusions. Bluefur wondered if any of the patrols had seen Pinestar since he'd left. ShadowClan has a new medicine cat. It was Cedar Star's turn. He nodded toward the thick furred, flat faced gray she cat that Blue Fur had noticed several moons ago at a previous gathering. Yellow Fang will work alongside Sage Whisker from now on. Blue Fur narrowed her eyes. Like Hawkheart, Yellow Fang had been a warrior first. That made for a dangerous combination in her experience. Medicine cats should never study the skills of battle. They should be trained only to heal and help their clanmates. Hailstar nodded respectfully. Welcome, Yellow Fang. May Star Clan light your path, Sunstar meowed. Heatherstar padded forward. I pray that your ancestors guide you wisely in your duties. Bluefur's gaze drifted to the foot of the Great Rock. To her surprise, Ragged Pelt, the Shadow Clan deputy, was narrowing his eyes at Yellow Fang. The gray she cat shot him a look sharper than Flint. Had the two clanmates just quarreled? Bluefur twitched her ears. Yellow Fang didn't look like she'd be easy to get along with. Bluefur didn't envy Shadow Clan, having to put up with her as their medicine cat after Sage Whisker. Heather Star began her report. Wind Clan has thrived this green leaf. We have never seen so many rabbits on the moor, and we've made the most of Star Clan's bountiful gift. Hailstar stepped forward. River Clan, too, has enjoyed rich prey. The river has been full of fish and its banks stocked with prey. He glanced down at his clan.
and Blue Fur realized the River Clan leader was looking straight at Oakheart. Only one cloud shadows our horizon. He nodded to the River Clan warrior. Oakheart has more information. Blue Fur snorted as Oakheart bounded onto the Great Rock. He has no right to be up there, she hissed to Rosetail. Clearly, other cats agreed. Shock murmured through the clans. I am sorry, Oakheart began, his voice carrying clearly across the hollow. I do not belong here. But with so many cats, I was afraid you wouldn't be able to hear me from down there. He nodded to the shadowy base of the rock. I hope you will forgive my boldness. I do not mean to offend. The murmuring ceased. Ears pricked up and muzzles were raised to hear what the young RiverClan warrior would say next. Smooth as a snake, Bluefur growled. I know, Rosetail breathed, and so handsome. You don't actually think. Hush, Rosetail cut her off. He's speaking. Two legs have set up a camp on our land. Their nests are small, and they keep changing as new two legs come and old two legs go. During Greenleaf, I led the patrols that monitored the intrusion. His mew was calm and clear. His gaze brushed the clans, holding the attention of every cat. We wanted to discover the two legs' intentions, whether this was the beginning of a bigger invasion or the start of a new two leg place. As far as we can tell, the new camp exists to house two legs without proper nests. They bring their own dens, made of soft, flapping pelts, and take them away when they leave. Though they stray from their camp and have become quite a nuisance on one stretch of the river, for the most part they seem peaceful and prefer to head out of RiverClan territory. So far, no two-leg has come near RiverClan's camp. But we have plans in place to distract them if they should. Mews of approval sounded from the clans. Wise idea, Adderfang murmured. Tall Tail of Wind Clan nodded to one of his clanmates. Sounds like they're handling the situation well. Hailstar finished the report as Oakheart slid unobtrusively from the rock. The two legs are coming less often now that leaf fall is here. Let us hope that the freezing leaf bear weather will drive them away altogether. Wow. Rosetail leaned against Bluefur. Why don't we have a warrior like that in ThunderClan? She sighed. Bluefur pretended she didn't know what Rosetail meant. Like Hailstar? No, Mouse Brain. Rosetail nudged her. Like Oakheart. In case you hadn't noticed, he's River Clan. There may be a truce, but we're still supposed to be loyal to our own clanmates. Bluefur felt oddly uncomfortable hearing Rosetail mooning over the River Clan warrior. Am I jealous? She pushed the thought away quickly. The leaders were jumping down from the Great Rock. It seemed that the rich Greenleaf had brought harmony to the clans, and there was nothing more to discuss. Perhaps they'd be home before Tiger Kit was asleep after all. Bluefur padded up the slope, pulling ahead of her clanmates. She didn't want to hear any more praise for the young River Clan warrior. She wanted to push Oakheart out of her mind. If it wasn't for him, Snowfur would be alive. And yet the memory of his gaze in the moonlight lingered in her mind. Bluefur recalled what she had said to Snowfur beside the river. River Clan can't be all bad, can they? I mean, they must be cats like us. Paul steps sounded at her tail as Sunstar caught up. Are you in a hurry to get home? He asked, puffing slightly. I just want to get to my nest. Are you tired? A little. Good. The ThunderClan leader's mew was gentle. I've noticed you haven't been sleeping well. Is it any wonder? Blue Fur's pelt prickled once again. I'm glad you came tonight. Did I have any choice? We always have a choice, Sunstar reminded her. I think Pinestar proved that. Bluefur didn't reply. She wondered what the ThunderClan leader really wanted to say. For example, he went on. Here we go. You can choose whether to help your clan or be a burden to it. I'm not a burden. 
Sunstar didn't seem interested in Bluefur's objections. You can choose whether to remember Snowfur by resting your chin on your paws all day, or by being the warrior she would expect you to be. It felt like they'd had this conversation before, over Moonflower. You've had much grief for one cat, Sunstar admitted. But life goes on. White Kit will become an apprentice and then a warrior, and you can choose to help him with that or to let him work it out for himself. The ThunderClan leader glanced at her as they crossed a glade flooded with gray moonlight. I have high hopes for you, Blue Fur. You were my apprentice once, and I will always feel like your mentor. I want you to strive to become the best warrior you can be, because I believe one day ThunderClan will have need of your gifts. Bluefur slowed to a stop and allowed Sunstar to continue on without her. Does he know about the prophecy? Surely not, or he would have said something. Besides, blazing through the forest at the head of her clan didn't seem so exciting now that Snowfur and Moonflower couldn't share her success. Had she really believed Goosefeather's vague prophecy once? Snowfur had said it was nonsense, just the rambling of a cranky old medicine cat. Maybe she'd been right all along. As her clanmates thronged around her at the top of the ravine, Bluefur gazed across the valley with Goosefeather's words echoing in her head. You are fire, and you will blaze through the forest. But beware, even the most powerful flames can be destroyed by water. Chapter 30 when sleep came, it came furiously, chaotic with images and sounds. Bluefur dreamed of stars swirling above a wind-tossed forest. The gale tugged her fur as it swept from the moorland to the edge of the gorge where she teetered, staring down into the foaming torrent far below. A blotch of white pelt was spinning in the crashing waters, flung downstream by the raging current. Snowfur! Bluefur's panicked screech was whipped away by the wind. Below, her sister disappeared, sucked down by the water, then thrown up again just long enough to shriek, White Kit! Horror clutched Bluefur's heart as she saw a smaller scrap spun in the current farther downstream. My son! Snowfur's yowl echoed from the towering walls of rock that channeled the water into a seething fury. No! Bluefur raced along the edge of the gorge, scrabbling over boulders, leaping ledges, heading downstream to where she knew the gorge opened into calmer waters. She could reach Snowfur and White Kit there, if the jagged rocks jutting midstream did not batter them to death first. She felt their terror, sensed their paws churning helplessly against the massive flood as the water wrenched them down, filling their ears and eyes and noses. She felt their aching lungs gasp for breath as they struggled to reach air. She felt their fragile bodies slam past rocks and be dragged over grazing stone buffeted by boulder after boulder as the current swept them mercilessly on. Where the gorge ended and the water flowed out past gently sloping shores, blue fur waded into the shallows and peered upstream, searching for snow fur and white kit. The water drenched her pelt, Tried to pull her away from the cliffs, but she dug in her claws, gripping the riverbed and praying to Star Clan. It should be me drowning, not them. That is my destiny, not theirs. Snowfur appeared first, flung out of the canyon with her head barely above water. Save my son! Her terrified shriek was choked by the waves as the river sucked her under again. Snowfur! Hysterical, Bluefur tried to wade toward her sister, but the torrent pushed her back. A scrap of white fur bobbed toward her. White Kit. She could save him. The tiny shape hurtled toward her, his paws flailing, his squeals piercing the air. I won't let you die. Plunging in up to her chin, Bluefur lunged for him as he passed, grabbing his scruff in her teeth and pulling him close. She churned her paws until she felt the riverbed beneath them then dragged him limp onto the bank. You're safe now, she gasped, coughing water. It's all right. Her mew grew fierce as she willed him to open his eyes. 
I won't let anything hurt you, ever. But White Kit lay still, water bubbling at his lips and streaming from his pelt. Blue Fur fought down a wave of panic. Wake up, I saved you. She shivered as she felt the chill of water running in rivulets down her neck. Mouse dung, came Fuzzy Pelt's complaint. The roof's leaking again. Blue Fur sat bolt upright. Rain was running into the den, trickling from the yew branches overhead and soaking into her pelt. She leaped out of her nest and bolted from the den. White Kit, she called as she scrambled into the night-shadowed nursery. Eyes flashed in the darkness, round with alarm. Blue Fur? Robin Wing's frightened mew sounded from the darkness. What's wrong? Blue Fur scanned the den, searching for White Kit's snowy pelt. Where is he? She demanded. Oh, Star Clan, I can't lose him as well. Blue Fur! A delighted mew sounded from Robin Wing's nest, and Blue Fur saw White Kit's pelt glowing in the darkness. What are you doing here? It's the middle of the night. She raced to him, curling herself around his small body, wrapping him to her and closing her eyes gratefully. Thanks, Star Clan, it was only a dream. Oof, you're squashing me, White Kit protested. He wriggled, then yawned and relaxed against Blue Fur's flank. Hardly daring to breathe, Blue Fur watched him sleep until the dawnlight began to filter through the brambles. He woke with a start, his eyes wide. I thought I dreamed you'd come to see me, he chirped. I'm so glad you're here, I've missed you. He stretched up to lick her cheek and Blue Fur felt a stab of guilt. How could she have wanted to abandon him? He was all she had left to remind her of Snow Fur. Look what I've learned. White Kit scrambled away from her and crouched on the den floor, his tail straight and his belly pressed on the soft earth in a perfect hunting crouch. That's great, Blue Fur purred. Who taught you that? Lionheart, White Kit mewed proudly. He blinked at her, his round blue eyes so much like his mother's. Will you teach me some battle moves? When you're a little older. Spotted Kit was struggling out of Swift Breeze's nest. The white splashes on her tortoiseshell pelt gleamed in the pale dawn. White Kit scrambled over to her. Do you want me to show you the hunter's crouch? He mewed. She nodded and hunkered down while White Kit steadied her tail. You have to keep it really still, he muttered through the mouthful of fur. Thank you for looking after him so well, Blue Fur mewed to Robin Wing. The small brown queen lifted her head. Frost Kit and Brindle Kit stirred against her belly with mews of protest. He's a lovely kit. Robin Wing purred. Blue Fur felt a stone lodge in her throat. I wish I'd visited more often. Robin Wing touched the tip of her tail to Blue Fur's shoulder. Kits are very forgiving, she murmured. He won't remember what you didn't do, only what you did. You can change everything if you want to. Blue Fur gazed into her amber eyes. I do. Attack! White Kit gave a warning yell and launched himself at Blue Fur. His tiny claws pricked her pelt as he dangled from her fur. Growling like a badger, she stomped around the den, pretending to try to throw him off while he squealed with delight. Fur scraped at the entrance. Thistle Claw! White Kit greeted his father with a happy mew as the tom squeezed into the nursery. Thistleclaw looked over his son's head and scowled at Blue Fur. What are you doing here? Visiting White Kit, Blue Fur stood her ground as Thistleclaw glared at her. Sunstar wants you on patrol, Thistleclaw told her. You should go. He narrowed his eyes. The sooner, the better. He turned to White Kit and tumbled him out of the nursery with a hefty paw. Now, young warrior, are you ready to practice those battle moves I showed you? He pushed his way out after his kit. You never know when some mangy river clan furball is going to steal into camp. Blue Fur followed, her ears twitching. White Kit was too young for battle training. He might get hurt, 
she protested. Thistleclaw was already urging the young kit to rear up on his stubby hind legs. Come on, my little warrior, see if you can duck this. He swiped a paw close to White Kit's ear. Bluefur caught up to them. Stop, he's not ready. Thistleclaw curled his lip. How would you know? He challenged. You've hardly looked at him in the last moon. Bluefur flinched. I'm all he has now, Thistleclaw went on and I'll bring him up to be a warrior the clan can be proud of. He has me too, Bluefur argued, but Thistleclaw was already shooing White Kid away. Bluefur watched them go, feeling hollow. Goosefeather's stinky breath stirred her ear fur. A thistle has thorns sharp as claws, he whispered. Don't let White Kid get hurt by them. Bluefur turned but the medicine cat was already shambling away, mumbling to himself, as though he wasn't even aware that he'd spoken to her. Frustration surged through her paws. Why did Goosefeather always have to talk in riddles? Was he warning her about Thistleclaw? Surely White Kid was safe with his father. Snowfur had trusted him, and because of that, Bluefur had tried to believe the spiky warrior was strong and loyal. She looked back at him with distrust pricking in her pelt. He was instructing White Kid again. Now, when you dive, try twisting at the last moment. Was the young Kit really ready for such an advanced battle move? There you are, Blue Fur, Sunstar called to her from below High Rock. I'm organizing the patrols. Fuzzy Pelt, Dappletail, Adderfang, and Poppy Dawn were gathered around him. Golden Flower and Lionheart paced back and forth. Shaking her whiskers to clear her thoughts, Bluefur padded over to join them. Where's Tawny Spots? The ThunderClan deputy usually managed the patrols. He's sick, Sunstar told her. Haven't you noticed how thin he's been looking lately? Goldenflower commented. Bluefur realized that for too long she hadn't noticed much apart from her own grief. Is Feather Whisker treating him? Sunstar nodded. He says he can make him more comfortable. Does he know what's wrong? Sunstar's eyes darkened. No, but he says this bout should pass in a few days like the others. Tawny Spots has suffered other bouts of sickness? Bluefur suddenly felt anxious. Leaf Bear lay ahead like a lion waiting in ambush. It was no time to be ill. Thistleclaw told me you wanted me for patrol, she mewed to Sunstar. The dawn patrol's left now. Sorry, Bluefur's tail drooped. I'll go with the next one. Sunstar shrugged. Doesn't matter. I was glad to hear you were visiting White Kit. He glanced over at the snowy Kit, still training with his father. You can go hunting with Thistleclaw instead. Bluefur's heart sank. At least it would get Thistleclaw away from his son for a while. Not that she wanted to separate White Kid from his father, but Thistleclaw was urging him to do more and more complex battle moves, even though the young Tom was starting to look tired. White Kit had not even eaten yet, and the sun was lifting over the trees. I hope you're right about him, Snowfur. The tree cut place monster growled in the distance as Blue Fur followed Thistleclaw through the pines. At this time of year, when the undergrowth elsewhere in ThunderClan's territory was brittle and flattened by rain, the bare forest around Tall Pines was as good a place as any to try to track prey. Of course, Sunstar will have to make a move on Sunning Rock soon. Thistleclaw had been proclaiming that their new leader should run RiverClan all the way from the ravine, and Bluefur was tired of listening. The other clans are expecting it, he went on. They'll think we're weak if we let those fish faces hold on to our territory through leaf bear. Bluefur halted as Thistleclaw disappeared behind a neatly piled stack of wood. She scented squirrel. She crouched with her ears pricked and heard the scampering of tiny paws. She spotted its gray pelt bobbing over the needle-strewn forest floor. Hardly big enough to feed the elders, but the sooner she caught something, the sooner they could return to camp. Only Star Clan knew why Sunstar had sent them out alone. Was he hoping White Kit's kin might bond while they hunted? She scowled at the thought and turned her attention to the squirrel. 
Invaders! Thistleclaw's yowl sent the squirrel scooting up a tree. Mouse stung. Crossly, Bluefur bounded onto the pile of cut wood. What is it? She peered down at Thistleclaw, who was scanning the woods with his hackles up. When she tasted the air, she could scent nothing but the sour tang of two-leg place and the kitty pet stench that went with it. Thistleclaw dropped to his belly. Kitty pet invasion, he hissed. Follow me. Annoyed by his bossiness, Bluefur bounded down the log pile and followed. There was only a slight scent of kitty pet, not exactly an invasion. She didn't see why Thistleclaw was making such a fuss. It smells like a kit, she pointed out. Kits turn into cats, Thistleclaw growled. Not in one afternoon. He turned on her. Do you want to share our prey with those spoiled fatties? That's not what I said, Bluefur huffed. She sat up. Let's get back to hunting. But Thistleclaw had already crossed the border and was darting toward a two-leg fence. He climbed up it and stalked along the top. Come back, Bluefur hissed. That's not our territory. There are no kitty pet scent markers warning me to keep out, Thistleclaw spat. She scooted after him. Keep your voice down. Are you scared of them? I just don't see why you need to start a fight. Thistleclaw leaped down and faced her. You know what your problem is, Blue Fur? You're soft. Soft on warriors from other clans and soft on kitty pets. I saw you talking to Oakheart at the gathering. Do you care about your clan at all? Of course I do, Blue Fur hissed. How dare he make her defend her loyalty? And I wasn't exactly having a friendly chat with Oakheart. Well, I need more proof before I let you near White Kit. Thistleclaw headed back into the trees. Bluefur hurried after. He's my kin too. You weren't there when he needed you, Thistleclaw snarled. I was. Just keep away from him, or I'll make you. Chapter 31 Bluefur curled her lip. I'd like to see you try, she growled. Without waiting for his answer, she spun around and raced back through the forest. Thistleclaw could finish the patrol on his own. Back so soon? Sunstar was scrambling to the top of the ravine when she reached it. Bluefur hadn't prepared an excuse. She looked at him with her mouth half open. No prey? Sunstar pressed. How could she tell him about Thistleclaw's threat? Who would believe that a loyal warrior would say such a thing to his clanmate? She hardly believed it herself. Prey was poor, so I came back early to spend time with White Kit. A lame excuse, but at least it was partly true. Sunstar tipped his head to one side. I'm glad, he meowed. You'll be good for him, he paused. You seem more like your old self today. Do I? She stared at him hoping it was true. Go and see White Kit, he told her briskly. I reckon by the time he makes apprentice, you'll be ready for an apprentice of your own. Helping raise White Kit will give you some worthwhile practice. Th- thanks. Bluefur was caught off guard by the Thunder Clan leader's warmth. She was afraid that she'd done nothing to earn it. She slid her paws over the edge of the ravine and jumped down. Next time, though, don't give up on the prey, Sunstar called after her. I won't, she promised. White Kit was fast asleep when she squeezed into the nursery. He was tired after his feed, Robin Wing apologized. I think Thistleclaw wore him out. Blue Fern nuzzled him gently and he rolled in his sleep and rested his small paw against her muzzle. It was as soft as a rabbit tail. Blue Fur breathed in the scent of him, so like her sister, and backed out of the nursery. How's the prey running? Thrushpelt's mew surprised her. Not so good. Where'd you go? Tall Pines. Thrushpelt glanced past her shoulder at the nursery. How's White Kit? Fine. He's lucky to have you to watch out for him. I don't know. Bluefur looked at her paws. I've not done too great so far. 
you've had a lot to deal with. His gaze grew soft. I think you'd make a great mother. Bluefur opened her mouth, searching for words, her ears hot. Thrushpelt shifted his paws as though he was regretting what he'd said. There's Rosetail. Relieved to see her denmate padding past with a vole in her jaws, Bluefur bounded away and fell in beside her. Rosetail dropped the vole on the fresh kill pile. You and Thrushpelt make such a great couple. Bluefur backed away. She'd been hoping to escape embarrassment, not make it worse. He, he's a good friend, she blurted, but we're not a couple. Really? I'm too busy with White Kit to worry about stuff like that, Bluefur mumbled. But you must have time to look for a mate, and Thrushpelt is obviously interested in you. Snowfur's kit is more important, Bluefur insisted. Now that he's got no mother, it's up to me to look after him. There was no way she was going to let Thistleclaw be the greatest influence in his life. There was more to being a clan cat than fighting and chasing off trespassers. That's what had killed Snowfur. Rosetail was still chatting. I've just seen Tawny Spots, she reported. He's in the medicine den, says he's too sick to eat. Maybe he'll stop being clan deputy. What? Bluefur snapped from her thoughts. Sunstar will have to appoint someone else. Bluefur blinked. Stormtail? The gray warrior would be pleased. Or Adderfang, Rosetail suggested. Bluefur narrowed her eyes. The deputy needed to have wisdom as well as courage. Not that Adderfang was mouse-brained, but he saw only as far as the battle and never beyond. Maybe Thistleclaw. Rosetail's new suggestion made Bluefur gasp. He's too young. He says he's going to be the youngest deputy the clans have ever seen. No way. He talks about it all the time, Rosetail meowed. Deputy, she snorted, as if Sunstar would give him the chance to lead us all into battle at the flick of a tail. Rigidly keeping her encounter with Thrushpelt out of her mind, Blue Fur rummaged through Mumblefoot's nest and plucked out the last ragged scrap of moss. With no apprentices in the clan, the younger warriors were taking turns cleaning out the elder's den. Since Blue Fur had returned early from her morning patrol, she had volunteered to see to the elders by herself. Lionheart's going to bring fresh bracken later, she told him. Well, I hope it's not too much later, Weed Whisker complained. You've hardly left me anything to rest on. Larksong purred. You've got plenty of padding to keep you comfortable till then. It was true. After a prey-rich green leaf, Weed Whisker was fatter than ever. I promised Feather Whisker I'd check you for ticks as well. Stonepelt shook his broad head. We can do that ourselves, he assured her. But what if? If we find any, I'll go to Feather Whisker for the bile myself. Thanks, Blue Fur was grateful. She wanted to be out in the forest patrolling and hunting for her clan. She had a lot of catching up to do. Just then, however, Sunstar called from outside the fallen tree. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey gather beneath High Rock. Bluefur wondered why he still used Pine Star's traditional call to the clan. Everyone knew Frost Kit, Brindle Kit, Spotted Kit, Willow Kit, and Red Kit would be bundling out of the nursery to find out what was going on, even though they weren't old enough to recognize prey, let alone catch it. Tiger Kit was already in the middle of the clearing, gazing up at Sunstar, when Blue Fur pushed her way from the tangle of branches. Swift Breeze and Robin Wing were squeezing out of the nursery, their kits wriggling out beside them, eyes bright with excitement. Fuzzy Pelt and White Eye were on their paws beside the nettle patch. Lionheart and Goldenflower were dragging a bundle of bracken through the camp entrance. They abandoned it beside the barrier of gorse and hurried to join their clanmates. Adderfang had been stretched outside the warrior's den, and Poppy Dawn and Speckletail had been chatting with Windflight and Dappletail at the edge of the clearing. They all came to join Featherwhisker and Goosefeather, who sat beside Sparrowpelt with their tails wrapped neatly over their paws. As Bluefur settled beside Rosetail, she noticed tawny spots, thin and trembling, crouched in the fern tunnel, shadows dappling his dull pelt. The clan stared up expectantly at the Thunder Clan leader. 
Clanmates, it's time to welcome a new apprentice. Sunstar, his eyes fixed on Tiger Kit, leaped down from High Rock and beckoned the young Tom forward. Leopardfoot quivered with pride as the Thunder Clan leader went on. Tiger Kit is six moons old and more than ready to begin his training. From this day, until he earns his warrior name, he shall be known as Tiger Paw. Bluefur leaned forward, eager to know who his mentor would be. Only that morning, Sunstar had hinted that Bluefur was nearly ready for her own apprentice. Thistleclaw will be his mentor. The spiky warrior padded forward, tail high, and pressed his broad muzzle to Tigerpaw's head. Tigerpaw! Tigerpaw! As the clan cheered his name, Bluefur tried to push away a pang of disappointment. Why had Sunstar chosen Thistleclaw over her? He hadn't been a warrior as long, and didn't Sunstar see how dangerous he could be? Rosetail leaned closer, her breath warm in Bluefur's ear. Now he's going to be even more convinced he'll be the next deputy, she whispered. A shiver ran down Bluefur's spine, and she unsheathed her claws, feeling an odd twinge, as though she were about to go into battle. Something small brushed behind her. She turned to see White Kit, who had crept away from his den mates. I'm glad he didn't make Tigerpaw your apprentice, he mewed. I want you to be my mentor. Bluefur glanced at Sunstar. He was watching, eyes narrow. He nodded very slightly as though agreeing with the little White Kit. She would be a mentor soon. But would it be soon enough to let her become the next clan deputy? Her belly tightened when she saw tawny spots padding unsteadily back down the fern tunnel. Poppy Dawn padded forward as Sunstar went on. I have one more announcement, the Thunder Clan leader meowed. Poppy Dawn has decided to move into the Elder's Den. Bluefur blinked. She hadn't realized Poppy Dawn was so old, though now that she thought about it, she realized the dark brown she cat often trailed at the back of the patrols and brought home smaller and weaker fresh kill than her clanmates did. For the first time, she noticed flecks of gray around the warrior's muzzle. Poppy Dawn dipped her head. I'm grateful to my clan for giving me the chance to serve them this long, and for the peaceful life I will have as an elder, she meowed formally. Her clanmates streamed around her, brushing muzzles, flicking tails. Tigerpaw shouldered his way through the crowd and touched his nose to Poppy Dawn's. I'll take better care of you than any other apprentice, he promised. That won't be hard, Rosetail whispered, considering he's the only one. Bluefur's whiskers twitched in amusement, but she couldn't help admiring the young Tom's eagerness, remembering how much she'd resented the dull chores like clearing out dens. Tigerpaw was certainly determined to live by the warrior code. She just prayed Thistleclaw didn't teach him that fighting was more important than caring for his clanmates. Finally, Sunstar had one more announcement. While Tawny Spots is ill, Adderfang will stand in as deputy. Stormtail nodded to his denmate as Adderfang puffed out his chest. Tawny Spots will return to his duties once he's recovered, Sunstar added. Uneasy glances flashed between Stormtail, Fuzzy Pelt, and Adderfang. Clearly, the senior warriors weren't as certain of Tawny Spots' recovery as their leader was. Goosefeather stepped forward. I need help gathering herbs, he announced. The clan stared at him. Bluefur guessed they were as surprised as she was that the medicine cat was acting like a medicine cat again. Bluefur? Goosefeather tipped his head to one side. Would you come? Bluefur glanced at Sunstar, waiting for permission. The Thunder Clan leader nodded. Anxiety fluttered in her belly. Why had Goosefeather picked her? She felt less than comfortable as she followed the shambling Tom into the forest. Did he want to talk about the prophecy? She'd assumed he'd forgotten, and was beginning to think that it had just been one of his wild predictions that came to nothing. If not the prophecy, perhaps Star Clan had told him about her meeting with Oakheart, and the feelings he'd stirred in her that she had been trying so hard to ignore. Star Clan, after all, saw everything. Why wouldn't they share it with the clan's medicine cat? 
I see you've taken an interest in White Kit, Goosefeather observed as they climbed a leafy slope. He's my kin, she mewed. So am I, he reminded her. But you don't visit me. That's because you're madder than a hare. She pushed away the thought, suddenly frightened that he could read her mind. I'm glad you're watching out for him, Goosefeather went on. He's got a good heart. But young kits are easily influenced. Was he warning her about Thistleclaw again? She wanted to ask him straight out, but didn't dare. After all, Thistleclaw was a loyal warrior who'd done nothing but protect and feed his clan. Her worries might sound weird. Have you thought about the prophecy? He asked. So he had remembered. She nodded. Good. Goosefeather stopped beside a small leafy plant that smelled zesty. Bluefur wrinkled her nose as he began to tear off leaves with his paws. Harvest it like this, he ordered. Don't use your teeth or your tongue will be numb for days. Bluefur nodded and began to pluck the leaves. They were surprisingly strong for such lush looking leaves, and she found herself having to tug hard to pull them up. Goosefeather padded to a smooth silver birch and started tearing off strips of the bark with deft claws. The strips curled in a pile beside him. Have you thought of becoming the next clan deputy? He asked, without looking around. Bluefur hesitated. Should she admit her ambition? She was still young. Would he think she was greedy? So you have, Goosefeather concluded. That's good. But I don't even have an apprentice yet, Bluefur pointed out. There's no way Sunstar will make me deputy. I'm too young. Tawny spots won't die yet, Goosefeather rasped. There's still time, but you're going to have to work for it. Bluefur wasn't convinced. There are so many warriors more experienced than me. Adderfang, for example. Sunstar wants a cat with youth and energy to serve beside him. Goosefeather peeled off another curl of silver bark. If he wants advice, he can go to the senior warriors any time he likes. He doesn't have to make them deputy for that. His deputy must be a cat he feels he can train. A cat who is not set in old ways. A cat who is open to new ideas. Someone like Thistleclaw? Bluefur ventured. Goosefeather growled. That young warrior is the reason you must become deputy. Blood lies in his path. Fire lies in yours. Blue fur stopped pulling leaves as she felt the medicine cat's gaze burn her fur. He was staring at her, his eyes ablaze. You must concentrate on nothing else, he hissed. What could be better in this time of bitter frost than a blazing fire? Your clan needs you. Don't let anything distract you. Did he mean White Kit? Surely not. He had only just encouraged her to help raise the young Tom. But what else could he mean? Oakheart? Take these herbs back. Goosefeather pushed his curls of bark onto Bluefur's pile of leaves. And leave me in peace. Dizzy with surprise, Bluefur hardly tasted the tang of the herbs as she grasped them in her jaws and padded unsteadily back to camp. Was this part of the prophecy? If only Snowfur were alive, she could talk to her about it. Snowfur might make sense of the medicine cat's warnings. Even if she didn't believe them, her honesty might help Bluefur untangle the jumble of emotions seething in her belly. A sandy gray pelt flashed through a swath of ferns ahead. Thrush pelt. Hi, he greeted her warmly. Can I help? Her mouth full, blue fur nodded and dropped some of her load. Thrush pelt picked it up and headed away to the ravine. Blue fur wondered if he'd been waiting for her. She felt a pang of regret. Why couldn't he spark the same feeling in her as Oakhart did? They bounded down the ravine and took the herbs to the medicine den. Dropping them at Feather Whisker's paws, Blue Fur spotted Tawny Spot's damp pelt poking from a nest, hollowed from the fern wall. Is he going to be okay? She whispered. These herbs should help, Feather Whisker replied. Tawny Spots won't die yet. Goosefeather's words rang in Blue Fur's ears. 
but there had been urgency in the medicine cat's words. Tawny Spots wasn't going to live forever, and she had to be ready. Thrushpelt was waiting for her when she emerged from the fern tunnel. So who do you think will be our next deputy? Bluefur stared at him in shock. Had he overheard her talking with Goosefeather? What? Well, Featherwhisker only said the herbs would help. He didn't say that Tawny Spots was going to be okay. He hasn't heard anything. Thanks, Star Clan. I guess. Thistleclaw's got his heart set on it, Thrushpelt went on. Am I the only cat in ThunderClan who's afraid of Thistleclaw's ambitions? But, Thrushpelt mewed thoughtfully, there are plenty of senior warriors to choose from. Adderfang is the logical choice. Unless Sunstar prefers youth to experience. Bluefur found herself using Goosefeather's argument. Thrushpelt glanced at her. I hadn't thought of that. His nose twitched as they neared the fresh kill pile. Two juicy sparrows lay on top. You hungry? Wasn't Thrushpelt the slightest bit interested in becoming deputy? He certainly didn't have Oakheart's fire and ambition. It was clear from the way the RiverClan warrior had addressed the clan from the Great Rock that he planned to be leader himself one day. Bluefur shifted her paws, relieved to see Rosetail eating alone. I'd better keep Rosetail company, she meowed quickly, and grabbing a sparrow, hurried to join her friend. She passed Stormtail and Dappletail in their usual spot beside the nettle patch, sharing a squirrel. They spent so much time together now that most of the clan were waiting for an announcement about kits, but Bluefur had heard Poppy Dawn tell Swift Breeze that some she cats never had kits, however much they wanted them. Bluefur continued through the camp. Sparrow Pelt and Fuzzy Pelt were patching the nursery with freshly fallen leaves. Robin Wing had brought White Kit out of the nursery and was washing him. Hello, Bluefur he called, trying to duck away from Robin Wing's tongue, but Robin Wing pulled him back and held him still with a firm paw. Rosetail looked up as Bluefur approached. I have never seen any cat look so disappointed. She was gazing at Thrushpelt, who looked lost beside the fresh kill pile. Shut up. Bluefur flung her sparrow on the ground and lay down. What's wrong with you? Rosetail demanded. I wish I had a cat following me around like that. I don't have time for a mate. Rosetail's gaze sharpened. You have your eye on the deputy ship, don't you? Bluefur's ears burned. So what if I do? Rosetail shrugged. Well, not many cats get to be deputy, so don't miss out on other things while you're waiting. As she washed her face after her meal, Goosefeather padded into the clearing, burrs sticking from his pelt. He took a piece of fresh kill and started wolfing it down. Does he have to eat so noisily? Bluefur complained, feeling queasy. She tried to imagine Goosefeather as a fit young apprentice, but couldn't. He'd probably been born a shambling old badger. It was hard to believe that he and Moonflower had been littermates. Tigerpaw burst through the gorse tunnel, his eyes bright. Thistleclaw padded in after. They must have been training. Tigerpaw was still bursting with energy. Can we practice those battle moves again? He asked his mentor. Practice by yourself for a while. Thistleclaw padded to the fresh kill pile. But who am I going to fight? Tigerpaw called after him. Use your imagination, Thistleclaw growled back. Tigerpaw glanced around the clearing. Bluefur stiffened when the young apprentice's gaze came to rest on White Kit, dozing beside Robin Wing in the afternoon sunshine. Relief flooded her as his gaze moved on. I could fight a whole clan of enemies, he boasted to no cat in particular. Poppy Dawn was dragging Bracken across the clearing. She looked up. River Clan had better watch out, she purred. Leopardfoot trotted over from the warrior's den. You're back, she meowed happily. She sniffed her son's pelt. Any injuries? Not yet, Tigerpaw sounded disappointed. But I learned a new move, watch this. He kicked his hind legs in the air, then landed with a twist and a slash of a forepaw. Brindlekit and Frostkit had slid out of the nursery to watch the young Tom. 
Frost Kit's eyes were huge and round with admiration. Very good, Adderfang called from beside the nettle patch. Stormtail nodded. I couldn't do better. Bluefur narrowed her eyes. The strength in the young Tom's shoulders was impressive, and his claws seemed to have outgrown the rest of him. They'd left scars in the earth so deep it made her shiver. Only Goosefeather didn't look up to admire Tigerpaw. He hunched tighter over his fresh kill. I'm sorry, Star Clan, he muttered. That cat should not have survived. This was never meant to happen. Startled, Bluefur looked around. None of the other cats seemed to have heard him. Only her. Does Goosefeather believe that Tigerpaw should have died? Chapter 32 Look! White Kit trotted across the clearing and tossed a moss ball at Frost Kit. I found another one! Frost Kit crouched, ready to pounce, but Brindle Kit scooted past her and pawed the ball away. Spotted Kit, Red Kit, and Willow Kit sat like three baby owls outside the nursery, their eyes fixed on the moss, as the older kits tossed it back and forth. Blue fur purred as it rolled to her paws. She hooked it up and held it high, making the kits jump for it. Robin Wing and Swift Breeze lay dozing in the pale leaf bare sun. Robin Wing opened one eye. Thanks for keeping them busy, Blue Fur. I enjoy it. She tossed the moss ball into the air and watched the kits scramble for it. It was easier to play with White Kit now that Thistleclaw was out with Tigerpaw so much. He was working his apprentice hard, waking him before dawn and drilling him in the sandy hollow any time they weren't patrolling or hunting. Tigerpaw had grown so quickly that he looked like a warrior after only a moon of training. Bluefur just wished he didn't have to show off his battle skills in the camp quite so much. Teach me a battle move, White Kit begged her daily. You're not old enough, she would tell him. She was going to make sure he made it to warrior without any serious injuries. She owed it to him and to Snowfur. Throw it again, throw it again! Frost Kit came bouncing back, the moss ball jiggling from her jaws. She dropped it at Bluefur's paws and looked up pleadingly. Please? Bluefur scooped it up and dangled it from a claw, her whiskers twitching as she watched the kit stare intently at the jerking clump of moss. Then she tossed it to the other side of the clearing and the kits haired away, kicking up dust. Bluefur? Sunstar was padding toward her. I want you to find Thistleclaw and Tigerpaw in the sandy hollow. He glanced at the sun, rising high into the milky blue sky. Bluefur cocked her head. Why? Sunstar looked solemn. I've been getting reports of kitty pets crossing the border, and I want you to go with them to investigate. Bluefur knew exactly who'd made the reports. Thistleclaw had been spoiling for a fight with a kitty pet for moons even more so since he'd become Tigerpaw's mentor, as if he wanted to make sure Tigerpaw understood that kitty pets were their enemies. Was he concerned that the young Tom would follow in his father's paw steps? Bluefur dipped her head to the ThunderClan leader and headed toward the camp entrance. White Kit pounded after her. Where are you going? Just to check the border, she explained. Is RiverClan invading again, or ShadowClan? White Kit reared onto his hind legs and swiped at the air. Bluefur wondered whether he had learned that battle move from Tigerpaw. Just some kitty pets sniffing around. Are you going to shred them to pieces? They're just kitty pets, Bluefur told him. A hiss should be enough to send them running. White Kit sighed. I wish I could come with you. Another few moons and you will, Bluefur promised. Now run back and play with your den mates so Robin Wing and Swift Breeze can rest. White Kit charged away, and Blue Fur headed for the training hollow. Now lunge at me, Thistleclaw commanded. Blue Fur could see the pair through the bushes just ahead of her. Baring his teeth, Tigerpaw rushed at Thistleclaw, slamming into his flank. Thistleclaw turned and flung his apprentice away with a hefty blow that left Tigerpaw staggering. Mouse brain, Thistleclaw growled. You should have seen that coming. 
Tigerpaw shook his head, looking dazed. Let me try it again, he begged. Bluefur hurried forward to interrupt. She couldn't watch such brutal training. She was sure Leopardfoot had no idea that Tigerpaw's mentor was so rough with her kit. Should she warn the ThunderClan leader what was going on? She shivered, thankful that Thistleclaw wouldn't be able to train White Kit. Thistleclaw, she called before Tigerpaw could take another lunge at his mentor. Both cats swung around, their eyes narrowing when they saw her. What is it? Thistleclaw demanded. Sunstar wants us to check the border for kitty pets, she told him. His dark gaze brightened. At last, he bounded into the trees. Come on, Tigerpaw, he called over his shoulder. Let's try out some of those battle moves for real. Paw's heavy blue fur followed. As they neared Two-Leg Place, Thistleclaw signaled to Tigerpaw. Run up ahead and check for scents, he ordered. Tigerpaw rushed off leaving Thistleclaw and Bluefur alone. I know what you're doing, Thistleclaw growled. Bluefur was alarmed by the ferocity of his mew. What? Playing with White Kit every time my tail's turned. He's my kin, she snapped, anger surging in her paws. He's my kit, he retorted. Just remember that. I can stop your dumb games anytime I want. How? Bluefur challenged. Thistleclaw flashed her a menacing look. Right now, I'm letting you play with him. But the moment I think you're turning him soft, the games will stop, get it? Bluefur glared at him, but Thistleclaw went on. He's my son, not yours. Stung, Bluefur opened her mouth to tell him exactly what she thought about his kit-rearing methods. Kitty pet scent, Tigerpaw came tearing back. Come on! The dark young tabby led them to a sparse strip of woodland, not far from a row of bright red two-leg nests. Light filtered through the bare branches, striping the forest floor. Tigerpaw started sniffing tufts of grass. The trail leads this way. Bluefur could smell a faint trace of kitty pet, not strong enough to belong to a full-grown cat. It's just a kit, she meowed. Not worth following. I forgot you had a soft spot for kitty pets, Thistleclaw growled. He followed his apprentice along the scent trail as it led through long grass at the edge of Two Leg Place. They pushed through the grass and emerged in a sunny patch of scrub beside a fence. A tiny black kitty pet was snuffling at the ground. As the three clan cats advanced, he spun around, eyes wide. Hello, he blinked happily. Tail high, Tigerpaw bristled, and Thistleclaw had already unsheathed his claws. Bluefur tensed, willing the tiny Tom to run. The fence wasn't far. There was a chance it might escape. A growl rumbled in Thistleclaw's throat. What are you doing here? This is ThunderClan territory. Thistleclaw, he's only a kit. He's no threat, Bluefur pleaded. An intruder is an intruder, Bluefur. You've always been too soft on them. Bluefur felt sick as Thistleclaw turned to his apprentice. Here, let's put it to my apprentice. What do you think, Tigerpaw? How should we handle this? I think the kitty pet should be taught a lesson, Tigerpaw hissed. One it'll remember. Bluefur stepped forward. Now hold on, there's no need for this. Thistleclaw turned on her, arching his back. Shut up! Tigerpaw lunged at the kit, sending it flying like a piece of prey. The kit skidded across the rough earth and landed, gasping for breath. Get up. Tail bushed in terror, the kit tried to scramble to its paws, but Tigerpaw pounced again. The tabby apprentice pinned the kit to the ground. With claws unsheathed, he swiped at its muzzle, then raked its flank. The kit squealed in agony. Show it your teeth, Tigerpaw, Thistleclaw goaded. Tigerpaw sunk his teeth into the kit's shoulder and hauled it to its paws. The kit yowled and struggled, its paws scrabbling helplessly on the ground until Tigerpaw, his eyes gleaming, flung him away. No! Blood welling scarlet along his wounds, the kit pressed his belly to the ground as though he wished he could just vanish. 
Tigerpaw padded grimly toward it. Stop, Tigerpaw, Bluefur pelted past him and stood in front of the kit. That's enough. She bared her teeth, prepared to fight. Tigerpaw would kill this kit if she let him carry on. It was no bigger than White Kit. The thought wrenched her heart. Warriors don't need to kill to win a battle, remember? Tigerpaw halted and glared at her. I was just defending our territory. And you've done that, Bluefur reasoned. This kit has learned its lesson. The kit stood up on shaking paws and gazed at Tigerpaw with terror in its eyes. Yeah, Tigerpaw agreed. He leered at the kit. You'll never forget me. Bluefur held her ground while the kit scuttled away. If I ever see you do something like that again, her eyes flashed from mentor to apprentice. I'll report you to Sunstar. We were only defending ThunderClan territory from invaders, Thistleclaw snarled. That so-called invader was a kit. Thistleclaw shrugged. That's his problem. He turned and stalked away between the trees. His spiky pelt soon swallowed in shadow. Tigerpaw trotted after him with his tail up, proud of his brave victory. Rage throbbed in Bluefur's paws as she stared after them. I'll never let you take power in this clan, Thistleclaw. Chapter 33 Star Clan honors you for your wisdom and your loyalty. I name you White Storm. As Sunstar pressed his muzzle to the white warrior's head, the clan broke into cheers. White Storm, White Storm. Bluefur closed her eyes, relief washing over her like rain. I kept my promise, Snowfur. I kept him safe. Bluefur hadn't been White Storm's mentor after all. Sunstar had told her that he didn't think Kin were the best mentors for Kin, especially as Bluefur had basically mothered Whitestorm since Snowfur's death. Instead, he had given Bluefur Frostpaw as an apprentice a few moons later, and Patchpelt had trained Whitestorm, a choice Bluefur approved of. Whitestorm had trained alongside Tigerclaw, and Bluefur was pleased to have a wise and gentle mentor around to temper Thistleclaw's brutal practices. She had involved herself whenever she could in Whitestorm's training, which hadn't been easy with Thistleclaw glowering at her whenever she tried to guide the young Tom. She opened her eyes, basking in the warmth of the cheers that welcomed Whitestorm to the clan. He had grown strong and handsome, and he stood now with his chin high and his eyes bright, thick snowy fur dazzling in the leaf fall sun. It had rained in the night and the forest sparkled with silvery drops, reflecting rainbows through the trees. Four seasons had passed since Bluefur had promised her sister in her dream of the gorge that she'd help raise the young Tom, seasons that had brought change to the whole clan. Redpaw, Willowpaw, and Spottedpaw had moved to the apprentice's den, though Spottedpaw spent every spare moment shadowing Featherwhisker fascinated by how much he knew about cures and herbs. Mumblefoot and Weed Whisker had died peacefully, and were still missed by their clanmates. Fuzzy Pelt and Windflight had joined Stonepelt, Larksong, and Poppy Dawn in the Elder's Den. White Eye had moved to the nursery, expecting her first kits. She was anxious about raising a litter through Leaf Bear, but the clan was strong and hopeful and Bluefur knew that they would protect the kits however harsh the season. Thistleclaw had established himself as a senior warrior, taking a nest near the center of the warrior's den. Tigerclaw had been a warrior for four moons and had already claimed a nest close to Thistleclaw's, shunning the outer den. No warrior had challenged him, though Bluefur wasn't sure whether that was because his denmates respected the fierce dark tabby and his former mentor, or feared them. Thistleclaw had become like a father to the dark tabby in Pinestar's absence. He had trained him to win at any cost, defending his methods as part of the warrior code, though Bluefur saw no honor in the way Thistleclaw fought for his clan. Tigerclaw watched Whitestorm now. The new warrior's eyes glittered as he padded over to Bluefur and dipped his head to her. Thank you. The white tom's mew had grown deep. 
You have given me so much. Bluefur's heart swelled. I won't let anything hurt you, ever. Your mother would be proud of you, Bluefur murmured, her mew catching in her throat. I know, Whitestorm purred. She'd be proud of you too. Bluefur's gaze clouded as she reached up and licked a stray tuft of fur on the warrior's shoulder. She noticed with a pang the scar behind his ear. Tigerclaw had done that when he unsheathed his claws during a training session, when both cats were still apprentices. Bluefur had blamed Thistleclaw. If you taught Tigerclaw respect for his clanmates, it would never have happened, she had told him. Thistleclaw had curled his lip. His clanmates must earn his respect. But Whitestorm will be scarred for life. It'll teach him to react more quickly next time. Bluefur had stalked away fuming. She was furious at the way Thistleclaw had seemed to pitch the apprentices against one another again and again. Seeing the scar now, she still had to push away a bolt of anger. What's done is done, she told herself. Perhaps Thistleclaw's ruthlessness had made Whitestorm a better fighter. Whitestorm! Lionheart and Goldenflower were calling to him. Whitestorm pressed his muzzle to Bluefur's cheek and hurried away. Lark song. Bluefur remembered that she'd promised to tell the old she cat about the naming ceremony. She had been too frail to leave her nest. Padding to the fresh kill pile, she picked a juicy mouse from the top and pushed through the branches of the fallen tree. Lark song was curled in her nest with her nose on her paws and her eyes closed. Her tortoiseshell pelt, once so pretty, was now dull and ragged. But the old she cat never lost her humor, even after her den mates Weed Whisker and Mumblefoot had died. At least I'll get a few moons' peace from their bickering before I join them in Star Clan, she had joked. Not wanting to wake her, Blue Fur laid the mouse beside her nest and began to creep out of the den. Larksong lifted her head. Did it go well? Blue Fur turned. Wonderfully. White Storm is a warrior now. A good name for a strong warrior, Larksong commented. She sniffed at the mouse and sat up, stretching. You'll miss him. What? Bluefur was unnerved by the solemn look in the old she-cat's eyes. White Storm. He's not going anywhere. In fact, he'll be closer now that we'll be sharing the same den. But he won't need you as much. Bluefur felt a pang. It was true. I still have Frostpaw to train she pointed out. Training an apprentice is not the same as raising a kit. Bluefur blinked as Larksong went on. You gave up everything for Snowfur's kit. Look around you. Your clanmates have mates, kits, lives of their own, beyond being a mentor. There's nothing more important than training warriors, Bluefur protested. Larksong gazed at her. Really? Bluefur shifted her paws. You've fulfilled your promise to Snowfur, Larksong mewed softly. You need to live your own life now, Bluefur, before you wake up and realize that you're as empty as a beech husk. Is that how the old she cat really saw life? Surely there were things to offer the clan other than kits. Bluefur was proud of what she'd done for Whitestorm, what she was doing with Frostpaw. Her apprentice was going to make a fine warrior. My life isn't empty. She started to back out of the den. Was this really how her clanmates saw her? Larksong prodded the mouse and without looking up rasped, maybe Thrushpelt has waited long enough. Bluefur scooted from the den without replying. Was Larksong telling her to take Thrushpelt as a mate? She shook her head, baffled. Bluefur, Tawny Spots was calling her from beneath High Rock. You can join Lionheart's hunting patrol. Lionheart and Goldenflower were pacing the clearing, while Thrushpelt sat nearby, plucking absently at the ground. Bluefur nodded to Tawny Spots. The Thunderclan deputy was growing thin again. 
his eyes tired. The sickness that had dogged him last leaf bear seemed to be returning. The clan cats might need a new deputy sooner than they thought. And if that happens, I need to be ready. Having a mate would only distract me, take away my focus. It's for the sake of my clan. Ready? Lionheart was staring at her, his yellow eyes bright. Bluefur nodded and followed the golden warrior as he led golden flower and thrush pelt out of the camp. They headed for the river, the ground turning wet under paw as they neared the shore. Wet ferns draped themselves over Bluefur's pelt. The rain made prey scent harder to detect. We should split up, Lionheart halted and looked over his patrol. We'll have more chance of picking up scents if we cover a wider area. Bluefur nodded. As her clanmates headed in different directions, she chose a path through the undergrowth onto wetter ground. Mud squelched between her claws as she picked up the scent of squirrel. With her heart quickening, she followed the trail, pulling up when Thrushpelt's scent tainted the bushes. She didn't want to steal his prey, so she doubled back, heading closer to the river. Something hopped between the clumps of marsh grass. Pricking her ears, Bluefur dropped into a crouch. A small moorhen was flitting low along the ground, stopping to peck at roots and snuffle for food in the mud. Water seeped up and soaked her belly as Bluefur crept forward. The bird hadn't seen her. It was too busy rooting around in the marsh grass. Bluefur sprang and grasped it with unsheathed claws. It fluttered for a moment in her paws, then fell still as she nipped its neck. It would make a tasty treat for White Eye. Good catch. A deep mew made her jump. Someone had called from the other side of the river. She spun around, the moorhen dangling from her jaws. Oh, cart. The River Clan Tom was watching her from the far shore. Bluefur dropped her catch and glared at him. Are you spying on me? No. Oakheart looked mildly amused. I'm allowed to patrol my own territory, you know. Lionheart's call sounded from farther up the bank. Bluefur! I have to go, she told Oakheart. He stared at her, his amber gaze unwavering. Okay. She headed away with her prey reluctant to leave. Walking away from the River Clan Tom left a hard, hollow feeling in her belly. He's River Clan, she reminded herself sharply. Her clanmates were watching, each with prey. Were you talking to someone? Lionheart asked her. Bluefur dropped her catch. Just to myself, she meowed quickly. Thrushpelt glanced admiringly at the moorhen. Nice catch, he purred. Thanks. Bluefur didn't meet his gaze. Somehow the ThunderClan warrior's praise didn't spark the same thrill in her as Oakheart's had done.